Welcome to my bank holiday introductory vlog. That makes sense? That makes sense? My, okay, take two. <laughs> hey friends, family, and of course, consent onlookers. I hope you are having a fantastic time and welcome to my vlog about Sutton the Mai. So, long story short, I got a job three weeks to the day after landing in Norway, which was something I was really, really pleased about. And I started work basically the next day. This was the 1st of May. And because it was May, I did not work a full week. There are four bank holidays, one every week in May this year. So I had a great time. I was hardly ever there. <laughs> Firstly, in Norway, Bank holidays are just whenever the day falls. So it's not on a Monday or a Friday. For example, the first bank holiday was Fushtemai, which is the 1st of May, International Workers' Day, which is a big deal in lots of other countries, but not particularly in the UK. And that was on a Tuesday. So we all just had a Tuesday off. Then it was Ascension Day. So Ascension Day, which was on a Thursday, and so was National Day. So we had two Thursdays off in a row. In Norway, Bank holidays mean that the shops are closed. So different to the UK. Uh, it's probably because they care about like workers' rights or something, but obviously as a consumer, I'm just like, oh, I wanted to buy clothes. Ugh. Um, so shops are closed. Cafes and restaurants, of course, do a roaring trade, but everything is shut. It's really odd and it's like the exception for it to be open. On the 17th of May every year it's Sutnamai eller which means or in Norwegian. Sutnamai eller Grunnlosdagen eller Nationaldagen. The National Day of Norway. The majority of this vlog is about Sutnamai on the 17th of May which was a fun-filled bonanza. It was so extra. However I also wanted to show you a bit about Labor Day on the 1st of May and also about how you can spend a bank holiday slash sunny day in Norway. The whole of May was a heat wave. Every day was 20 plus, which is just unheard of. Stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. I need a little hammer and sickle or something red and I'm wearing pink, kind of red. The first bank holiday of May was Workers' Day. What that means in Norway is that it's state-sanctioned protest day. This is something which I find quite funny. I think it's very big brother to say that you can like protest and fight the man, stick it to the man, but only on a certain day and going a certain route which the man has told you you can do. For a lot of the bands, this is kind of a dummy run a chance to practice for 17th of May when they really get into the element. People hold banners with slogans on about issues they want to protest. Many of them were domestic, for example, fewer working hours, more flexible time, two thirds of pension when you're in your 60s. But many were international and that quite surprised me. There was a nice rousing feeling of solidarity actually. Things like better working conditions in Asia, solidarity with Palestine. Many people donned uniforms, for example, you can see the nurses. And then at the back of the parade, there were the anarchists and the less serious issues. So for example, the anarchists had a sign which said, no working hours. As I said earlier, this is a generic what to do on a sunny day in Norway vlog about how I spent my bank holiday. You don't have to wait for the bank holidays to do this. Doggies have to stay hydrated. Happy Ascension Day, everybody. Have a free Thursday off. Second bank holiday of May. Two more to go. Not a full week in the month. It's absolutely beautiful. The sun is splitting the trees. Every time we thought it was going to be really cold and wet. So I didn't really bring any summer clothes. So I'm dressed as kind of a like hipster granny, as you can see, with my lovely long maxi skirt, which I actually really like. I am all about this like maxi trend, the like frilly long skirt trend that's going on at the moment and the wide leg trousers. Oh, I love me some cloth. But anyway. Case in point, near Rostormen, the cathedral, 
Look at it. It's absolutely boiling. It's like 27 degrees outside in May. My God. To celebrate the good weather, me and my boyfriend went on a walk to the fjord via the commune area of Trondheim. There are loads of eco houses being built, communal gardens, lots of street art. It's really fantastic. It's like a mini Christiana. I am Hank Marvin for an ice cream. It is so hot. It's so hot and idyllic. There's a little lighthouse over there. I'm just going to go and show you that. Look at that view. Now that is a fjord. Gratulere medagen! Happy National Day, everybody. So it is Sutten am I? The Rosigottisch Pudel. The third of the full bank holidays in May. I'm super hyped for National Day. <laughs> Which is why I've got three flags. National Day celebrates the Constitution being ratified. Yes? Yes. National Day celebrates the Constitution of Norway being ratified. So, for those of you that don't know, quick history lesson. Norway was part of Sweden, then it was part of Denmark, and then it got to be independent. National Day is a really big deal. The other way around. All the way around. Oh, no. De Denmark first, then Sweden. Ah, Norway was part of Denmark, then Sweden, then it got to be independent. But Thanks, we were briefly, <laughs> but we were briefly independent for a spring of 1814. Yeah, whatever. National Day is a big deal in Norway. There are loads of women in funads. They have a barna paraden, so all the children go in their schools and they march through town. And then there is a society parade, so all the societies in the town do the same thing, including lots and lots of marching bands, which woke me up at quarter to eight today. And um, yeah, it's just a fantastic, wholesome day. Eat lots of ice cream, have lots of hot dogs, a pasta, and I am super hyped. Oh my god, there's another one right here. Yes. So many. So this is like the center of Shoreditch. Look at him. <laughs> The man in the red waistcoat and the blue tunic is an additional son of the It's called a cough day. It's really nice to see this aesthetic level. There are quite a few. Hey, so we've just seen the children's march, which was really, really cool. Uh, there were loads of marching bands and it was really packed. It was more than I was expecting, to be honest. Everybody has flags, everybody has brunettes, everybody has little ribbons on all the men. Um, and everyone's just sort of really bloody love in Norway. It's quite annoying. Why do we have this in England? So we're just going to the society parade now, which is going to take pictures. We've had the school parade and it, the weather is fantastic. Sometimes it snows and it's like a heat wave this way, so it's great. There's so many brunettes. I've not seen any other country's flags, have you? In Oslo, which has a special clear flag parade so everyone can join in. Every year it begins with the children's parade and then there are the society parades. So it starts off with the army, the police, the fire trucks, etc. And then at the end there's a joke society, like the Star Wars society, which I'm obviously the most hyped about. They were literally dancing in the street for two hours. The girl in the blue outfit here is also wearing a kofta. It was really nice to see how integrated it was. You had boonads, modern, fancy evening dress and kofta all together.
This is the end of the St. John's Ambulance, who, as you can see, are carrying a little boy to demonstrate that they have the capability to carry sick people, nice of them, followed by the flamenco people, and a dog. I felt like this was very Norwegian. These are the skiing clubs in town and because it was summer they were using these special summer skis and rotor skates. <laughs> I thought this was hilarious. Nobody else did. Apparently it's really normal over here. And then it's time for the reason you all came here, the Star Wars Parade. It was really cute how they'd integrated with the band. Definitely my favourite section of the parade. None of the cute shows solidarity and national unity, Star Wars, galactic unity. People are going to think I'm like a conscientious Boonard objector, but in reality, I'd love one. <laughs> the most Norwegian sight you will ever see. So, we were just having a chat and we realised this is a bit like when there's like, for example, a royal wedding coming up on Saturday, so double bonanza for me. But it's a bit like when there's a big royal event, that's the only comparable English thing we'll have. We don't know this until St. John's Day. Or like, to be honest, it's probably the same as we'll have when there's a new coronation. So that was the massive national celebration, which was Sutnamai. This is going on all over Norway. The Oslo parades are even bigger. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, it was loads of fun. And after we went to the parades, we went back to my boyfriend's family home and celebrated both Norway's birthday and his mother's birthday. So the whole family were there. Um, there was tons of cake and food. We had some kransakaka, which I'll insert a picture of, which is a almond marzipani dessert um, of cake rings. And then you take a ring and you could dip it in coffee. It was really, really nice. I'd say a 10 out of 10 would nibble on again. As you can see from these pictures, everybody's wearing their boonads. So I want to talk a little bit about boonads. I'll probably make a completely separate video on this because I love some traditional dress. Um, but boonads are traditional Norwegian dress. They enjoyed a real resurgence from the beginning of the 20th century onwards. They were kind of peasant dress, but then they've been um, part of the like global romantic nationalist movement that happened around that time. They've been brought back into popular fashion. There is the female version, which is kind of like the apron, overshirt, and like tartan, it's different for every region. So if you're an expert, you can look and say, oh, that's a uh, Orslo, that's Kristiansand, that's a Bergenbuna. There's a male version, which looks a bit like lederhosen and has a jaunty little hat as well. But that was definitely much less common. When does one wear a bunad? Well, <laughs> depends how fancy you feel. The most common times are christenings, weddings, although my boyfriend told me he thinks that's very rural to actually wear one, like if you're a bride especially, um, and also confirmations, which are a really big thing over here. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the phenomenon that is 17th of May when Norwegians let their hair down, have hot dogs, lots of alcohol and ice cream. The healthy dollop of nationalism too. I'd really recommend visiting Norway on 17th May if you can. <laughs>